So once you've hit five or six balls and you've figured out how to get that ball rolling over properly, you're ready to get the gate out. Okay, get the putting gate out, you know, start with maybe two to three feet in front of you. And then you can, you know, work it as far, far apart as you like. You can use it on the putting green as well. You know, you can take the stand off it and then put it into the grass. Um, so it's got many uses. If you want to practice putts that have got a bit of break on it as well, you'll just focus on where you want to start the ball because one of the, the big things about putting is, is predicting, right? So you've got to predict what the green is going to do to the golf ball. You know, is the green fast? Is it slow? Is it wet? Is it dry? Is, is it windy? Um, are we going right to left, left to right? Is it a bit of both? Is the slope, all the slopes that you can see, sometimes you're going to see like several slopes. At the end of the day, do all of the slopes cancel themselves out and you just hit the ball dead straight? You know, you've got to look at a putt and predict what's going to happen. And we're all really good at doing that. We can do it. We've done it with things like, you know, kicking a football. You're going to, walking across the beach. You, you're just tapping a football along. There's a slope on the beach. So you, basically you tap the ball up the slope. So by the time you walk forwards and arrive to the ball, it's come down the slope and it's right in front of your feet again. We're really good at predicting. So that's what you've got to focus on with putting. You've got to look at the putt. What's going on with the slopes? What's going on with the speed of the green? What's going on with the weather? What's going on with the wind? And then your central nervous system will figure the rest out for you. All right, all you got to do is number one, get your three degrees of motion, nice and relaxed. Number two, that's obviously going to help you strike the ball out the center of the putter face. And then number three, we want to get the ball starting on the right line Okay, so when you're actually playing golf in a tournament or just casually with your friends, okay, you're not going to have the putting gate to help you out with your start line. So all you do instead, once you've predicted the slope on the green and you've figured out where you want to start the ball, you focus on a point two to three feet in front of the ball to put your ball over. That's all you do on the golf course. So if I've got a left to right putt, I'm going to stand back. I'm going to figure out, okay, I need to start this a foot to the left of the hole. I'm going to go put my ball down, which has got a line around it, and I'm going to point it, pick a spot about a foot, uh, sorry, two feet in front of me. I'm going to point the line on my ball to it or even the brand name to it. Because if I can start the ball over this point here, a couple of feet in front of me or even less, I've done my job. Okay, I can't do anything else. That's all I need to do. So when I put my putter behind the ball, I'll get the line on the top of my putter to aim through the brand name on the ball or the line if you've got one drawn on there. And it's pointing to my start line just here. So I aim it. I look at it. I'm happy with the aim. I'm looking at the, the lines on the top of the putter head. I'm looking at the, the start line that I want in front of me. Take my setup, feel nice and relaxed. And then from there, I just fire. And as long as I start over that point there, that's the best I can do. What happens after that happens, right? As long as you do your planning beforehand, you know, you're stepping back, looking at the slopes, you're coming down, checking things out, you know, what's going on with the wind and everything. As long as you've done all your planning, you picked a start line, You've had a couple of practice swings, you know, imagine you're hitting the putt. Practice swings are important because that's going to help you with trying to gauge how much power you're going to give it. So you've done your couple of practice swings and then you go to your ball, you line it up and then you start it over your start line and that's it. You can't do anything else or any better than that. What the G-Force putter is really good for as well as your start line because you've got the putting gate. Um, your rhythm and tempo because the shaft is really flexible and the training videos on how to plan your putt and execute it properly. It's helping out with the, the swing path of your putter or the arc of your putter, you know, the path, the, the head travels as you go back and through. There's lots of different styles out there. There's, there's 
you know, really good putters that swing it almost straight back and through. There's really good putters that swing it more on a, a sort of curved arc as they're coming back and through. And there's really good putters that swing it somewhere in between those two swing paths. So what I've done with the G-Force putter is there's um, like a ridge on the top of it. And when you look down on it, you can see the, the white shaft sort of sits and covers that ridge on the top of the putter. And all we're trying to do really, when we're putting back and through, is we're trying to keep the, the white shaft covering the top of the putter, the heel part of the putter as we go back, and then as we go through. If I open the face too much, then I can see the, the top part on the heel there. If I close the face too much, going back, I can see it again. So all I'm trying to do is keep the white part of the putter shaft on top of the, the ridge on the, on the putter as we go back and through. And that is giving you a 13 degree arc. It's pretty much like a tour average putting arc out there. It's just a guide. So, you know, you can be outside of that. That's fine. It's just to give you a little bit of a guide for when you put in. You can sort of follow that just to help you get started with your putter. And, it, you know, it'll really help out with your start line as well. It's just going to prevent you from going way off. You know, a lot of players will tend to open it out too much going back or close it. And then when they're coming through, they're, they're compensating and manipulating again on the way through and trying to trying to square it up. So it's a really good guide just to help you out with the, the putting swing path, the putting arc of the stroke. But yeah, it all comes back to the strike really. You know, when I think back to when I'm practicing a bit of putting and chipping, and I'm sure a lot of you golfers will relate to what I'm about to just say now is when we're, when we're chipping around the green or when we're putting around the green and we've, we've hit five or six putts, you're going you're gonna to go to a different part of the green and you just go up to your ball one-handed, don't you? And you tap all of the balls just over to the next point where you want to practice your putting from. Guaranteed every time when you do that, you strike the ball beautifully out in the middle of the putter face. And it's the same when I'm practicing my chipping. So you chip in just on the edge of the green and you know, you're just one-handedly knocking your balls back over to another spot you want to chip from. How good is a strike when you do that, right? Think about it. You're giving it a little flick and every one, pretty much, all right, you might thin one, but most of them, when you do that, bang, 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 bang. You strike it out the middle. So that has got to be a big light bulb moment. Think about it, all right? So what we're doing when we're just knocking the balls over there, bang, 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 look at the wrist. Okay, it's, it's free, isn't it? Yeah? And then you're striking it beautifully. So that's why I'm really sort of focusing on the three degrees of motion when, when you're using the swing trainers, when you're actually using your own golf clubs, because it's, it's really overlooked in the golf swing. The golf swing has become very mechanical, very stiff, very rigid, very position orientated. You're trying to get your wrist in a certain position. You're trying to lean the shaft forward when you're hitting your irons or wedges or whatever. You're breaking that kinetic chain. You're losing the three degrees of motion, all right? You're losing the ability to let your central nervous system, your brain, do all of the calculations for you. You know, it's gonna figure out where to apply the pressure in the ground and all this sort of stuff. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, at some point, you've just gotta let your subconscious get on with it. You know, you give it the instructions, you tell it what you wanna do, you stay nice and relaxed. You don't try and lock anything out, all right? If you're hitting the ball not so well, or if you're not putting very well, um, if you're not hitting shots very well, there is a tendency to try and lock things out, try and, you know, reduce movement, right? And that's what you're doing by reducing the movement, the freedom of movement, is you, you're breaking that kinetic chain, all right? We need the kinetic chain to fire. We need the energy to transfer from from the ground, through the body, through the hands, down the shaft, into the golf club. All right, that's the most efficient way to, to play this game really well. So if you're trying to freeze positions, um, reduce movement, you're not gonna be able to play golf very well. You're gonna strike it pretty poor. 
very inconsistent. There's going to be no speed, no enjoyment, and you're probably not going to play golf for very long. You're going to get pretty frustrated pretty quickly. So the quicker we can loosen things up and, you know, try and get rid of all of the destructive swing thoughts and forget thinking about the stuff that doesn't matter, you know, that there's a lot of stuff that you, you will do naturally if you just allow your central nervous system to do that. So if you focus on what I call the 80-20 rule, you should go and check that out. Really good, good book and that will give you a good idea of, of how to be successful, not just in your golf swing, but other areas of your life where you're focusing on the 20% of the most important things that are going to give you the 80% of the results. So that's what I'm doing here at GeForce Golf. I'm just getting you to focus on what's important. Um, it's going to be so simple. You know, you, you know yourself, if you watch your videos before, I just talk very, very simply. You know, there's no words that you don't understand. Everything is just how it should be, basically. So, you know, I've got all this high-tech equipment. I've got a hell of a lot of knowledge on the golf swing. But the best coaches in the world have got the ability to put it across so everybody can understand it, including the child. So if I can get it across simply, I'm doing my job properly. Appreciate you watching this video. Please comment on the video if you've got any questions, you can get in touch and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.